So what if the differential equation isn't exact? Some students might ask, can we make it exact? Is there a way that we can multiply by something and then um, the resulting equation will be exact? And I will say yes. You can probably guess, since I'm asking you that question, the answer is yes. Um, we can multiply a differential equation by an integrating factor in some cases, and that integrating factor will cause the um, transformed differential equation or the modified differential equation to be exact. So let's say you've got a differential equation that looks like this. You've got m of x and y times dx plus n of x and y times dy equals zero. And it turns out that the partial of m with respect to y is not equal to the partial of n with respect to x. Well, then this differential equation isn't exact, but we might be able to multiply this by an integrating factor. mu of x and y to make the differential equation exact. So I'm just going to drop the dependence on x and y, but remember that m and n and mu all depend, depend excuse me, on x and y. So sometimes it's possible to take this differential equation, multiply everything by mu, and of course mu times 0 is 0, and then the resulting differential equation might be exact. So this is exact under one condition. If the partial of this function with respect to y is equal to the partial of this function with respect to x. It's the same condition that we had before. But now we have this unknown function mu involved. So this is a function of x and y in general, and this is a function of x and y in general, and so are both of these. So when we take the partial of this product with respect to y, we've got to use the product rule. So this would be exact if the following is true. If the partial of mu with respect to y times m plus the partial of m with respect to y times mu is equal to the result of the product rule over here. Get derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second times the first. Now this is a difficult differential equation to solve. Um, I've got mu here and here, and I've got a partial derivative of mu with respect to y and the partial derivative of mu with respect to x. Um, so this is a partial differential equation and, and that, that's hard and sort of beyond the scope of this class. So we might say, is there any way that we can solve it by maybe simplifying the problem a little bit. And this is actually something that mathematicians do all the time. They say, I don't want to solve that problem. Let me think of a simpler case that I can solve. And one of the simpler cases that we might be able to solve is if mu were just a function of x or if it were just a function of y. So, so let's think about what the solutions would look like if mu were just a function of x or just a function of y. So let's look at the first case. Maybe mu depends on x. Well, in that case, instead of having that partial of mu with respect to x, it's not a partial derivative anymore. It's actually a regular derivative. It's the derivative of mu with respect to x. And of course, the partial of mu with respect to y is now 0 because there are no y's over here. It's just a function of x. Um, in that case, this differential equation would reduce to this. Well, the partial of mu with respect to y is zero, so that term is gone. And this condition for exactness um, changes to this. We've got the partial of m with respect to y times mu equals the partial of mu with respect to x, which is d mu dx now, times n, uh, plus the partial of n with respect to x times mu. Now I'd like to try to separate the variables if possible. So all the mu's are on one side. Um, in order to make that happen, I'll subtract this n sub x times mu from both sides. And factor out the mu.
Now I've just separated that uh, derivative of mu with respect to x into a d mu over dx. Now normally you shouldn't treat that like a fraction because it's truly a function of x. When you take the derivative of mu, you get this new function. But by definition of the differential of mu, um, this is actually the derivative of mu with respect to x um, times dx. Um, so uh, since that is the definition of that, like we can actually treat that like a fraction, which um, it feels kind of like you're cheating or doing something wrong, but uh, it's fine, but it's just because of a, a notational convention uh, for the differentials. So I'd like to get all the mu's on one side and all the other functions on another. And this d mu is in the numerator, so I have to get this mu on this side with the, the d mu on this side. So I'll divide both sides by mu. That gets rid of those guys. And I'd like to get rid of this n over here, so let's divide both sides by n. And let's multiply both sides by dx. Then we're here. Now, if this is a function of x and y times dx, um, this, this next step really doesn't work. So this only works if this is a function of x only. Um, well, and actually, if you think about this the way it was originally with this dx over here. Um, so let me, let me just go back a step. So this is the partial of n with respect to y minus the partial of n with respect to x divided by n equals 1 over mu times d mu dx. So before I multiplied by dx, it would have looked like this. This is a function of x times a function of x. So if this function of x is equal to this function of x, so this is only dependent on x, if that's true, then we can separate the variables and we can anti-differentiate. So if mu depends on x and the partial of m with respect to y minus the partial of n with respect to x divided by n depends only on x. So if this is true and this is true, then we can separate the variables and the antiderivative on that side is going to give me a natural log of the absolute value of mu. And then on this side, we're going to have this guy. And if I want to get mu by itself, I'll just exponentiate both sides. And then the absolute value would lead to a plus or minus, but I'm going to multiply a differential equation by this function anyway. So multiplying by negative one is not going to really change anything. So I can just let mu equal e to this power. And that will work. So if this is a function of x alone, then mu is a function of x and this is an integrating factor. Multiplying by this will make this exact if this is a function of x alone. If it's not, this isn't going to work. Um, so that's one possibility. The other possibility is that well, maybe mu is a function of y alone. Well, in that case, the partial of mu with respect to y is no longer a partial derivative. It's the derivative of mu with respect to y. And the partial of mu with respect to x is 0 because there are no x's in that. Well, then this differential equation simplifies quite a bit because this guy is 0, and that's the derivative of mu with respect to y. So we can do pretty much the same thing that we did um, with derivatives of mu with respect to x with respect to y. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to find out what the relation is if mu depends on y. So we'll have the derivative of mu with respect to y here times m equals oh plus excuse me plus the partial of m with respect to y times mu equals the partial of mu with respect to x which is zero plus the partial of n with respect to x times mu. Now let's get all the mu's on one side. We're rearranging the equation. Oops, it's 
derivative, not a partial anymore. And maybe let's divide both sides by mu. And divide both sides by m. So we end up with a 1 over mu times d mu dy equals this function over here. So this is a function of y only because mu depended on y. So if this is a function of y only, then we can separate the variables. And anti-differentiate. And we've still got this integral. But that'll be a function of y. You'll actually be able to evaluate that integral. And solving for mu by exponentiating and then not worrying about that um, absolute value, which would lead to a plus or a minus, which doesn't affect anything when we multiply by an integrating factor. Mu might be that. So if this is a function of y only, then um, mu can depend on y, and this would be the appropriate integrating factor. Okay, so that's how we make a differential equation exact, is we say, well, if I multiply this by mu, and mu um, is such that this equation is satisfied, um, then the resulting differential equation is exact. And this equation will be satisfied if mu depends on x and this function depends on x. Um, in that case, mu would be this. That's our integrating factor. Or the differential equation, the partial differential equation is satisfied if mu actually depends only on y, and this is a function of y only. Um, then this would be our integrating factor. So let's see how this works with an actual example. So let's say you've got 2xy plus y squared times dx plus xy times dy equals 0. And you're told that y of 1 is equal to 2. Well, this is our m of x and y. And this is our n of x and y. Well, let's take the partials. If we take the partial of this with respect to y and the partial of this with respect to x and we get the same thing, then the differential equation is exact and we can just use the exact method to solve it. Um, I already know this is homogeneous polar, so I would use that method instead. But we're going to practice uh, making a differential equation exact first. So um, let's look at the partial of m with respect to y. So the derivative of this with respect to y, that's a constant times y. It's just going to give us our constant. And the derivative of y squared with respect to y is 2y. And the partial of n with respect to x, well, that's a constant times x as far as we're concerned when we take a partial derivative. The derivative of a constant times x is just the constant. Um, so question becomes, if I subtract these and divide by one of these functions, will I get a function of x alone or y alone? Because I remember those formulas on the other side. Like, that's one way to do it. Just substitute these into the formulas and see if you get the function of x alone or y alone and just rely on that derivation that we already did. Or we could try to solve the equation from first principles, like try to figure out what the integration factor, integrating factor would be from first principles. So let's try to do that. Um, we say these are not equal. So the DE is not exact. So let's try multiplying by an integrating factor. 
So let's take mu and divide it or multiply it by, um, or multiply the entire equation by mu. And we're going to get this. Um, and our hope is, our goal is to find a value for mu or a function mu such that this new function, I'm going to call it m star, and this new function n star satisfy the following. We want the partial of this function with respect to y to equal this, the partial of that function with respect to x. m star with respect to y equals m star respect to x, those partial derivatives. Okay, well the, the partial of m star with respect to y would be, according to the product rule, derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second with respect to y times the first. That's the left hand side. And then the right hand side is the derivative of this expression with respect to x. So if I'm thinking of mu as my first function and x, y as my second function, we'll have the derivative of the first function times the second, plus the derivative of the second function with respect to x, treating y as a constant is just y, times the first. And so we've got this equation and the question is, well, if I let mu equal a function of x or if I let mu equal a function of y, which one of those is gonna make it possible for me to solve this equation? Well, I'm not really sure, so let's just go through the cases. Let's suppose that mu depends on x and see what happens. Well, in that case, the partial of mu with respect to y is zero, so this guy would be gone, and we would just have um, 2x plus 2y times mu equals the partial of mu with respect to x, which can now be written as a, an ordinary derivative of mu with respect to x. So I've got that there. And um, I want to get all the mu's on one side. So let's subtract that mu times y from both sides. So you've got 2x plus 2y minus y times mu equals xy times d mu dx. And I'd like to get all the mu's on one side and all the other functions on the other. So let's divide both sides by xy and also divide both sides by mu. So let's divide by mu times xy. So those guys are gone, the mu's are gone, and we end up with this. 2y minus y is of course just a single y. And I end up with 1 over mu times d mu dx. Now, if this is a function of x alone, this is going to work. But it's not. It's got a y in it. And um, I can simplify the x's from here. But if I did this divided by this, I'd end up with a 2 over y. And I can't get rid of the y's. And we assumed that mu is a function of x to make this work. So the only way that this could be satisfied is if this were a function of x only and it's not. So I guess mu is not going to be a function of x only. It's not possible. Not with this differential equation. So we'll say that's not possible. Try the other case. Okay. And sometimes you try both and they don't work. Both, neither of them work. So then you say, I'm stuck. I guess I can't make this one exact. And that happens sometimes. Now, if I ask you to do this on a quiz, I'm going to make sure that it's one that you can make exact through some um, assumption like this. So let's say mu depends on y only. So then this is going to be an ordinary derivative. And the partial of mu with respect to x is going to be 0. So this guy is going to be gone. So we would write the differential equation this way, that criteria, that, that criterion, excuse me, um, that would have to be satisfied to make the resulting equation exact is this now. We've got d mu dy times 2xy plus y squared plus 2x plus 2y times mu equals 
this term, which is zero plus mu y. And I'd like to get all the mu's on one side. So I'll subtract this from both sides. So you've got mu y, and then over here you're subtracting 2x times mu and subtracting 2y times mu. 2y times mu and that mu y, um, that's just going to give me a negative uh, mu y. So we'll have negative 2x times mu minus mu y and factor out the mu. You have negative 2x minus y times mu. And we want to separate the variables if we can. So I want all the mu's to be on this side, and I want all the other functions to be on the other side. So I'm just going to put little hash marks there. I think that's what those are called, hash marks. And I want all the mu's over here. So I will divide both sides by mu. And that means I want this function on the other side. So I'll divide both sides by 2xy plus y squared. And that simplifies to this. Got 1 over mu times d mu dy equals negative 2xy, or 2x minus y, over 2xy plus y squared. Now, we made the assumption that mu is a function of y alone. You might look at this and think, mu, this is not a function of y alone, so I guess neither one of them work. But actually, we can do a little bit of algebra here on this one. Don't forget your algebra. Let's factor out a negative 1. And then in the denominator, both of these terms have a y in common, so let's factor out a y. y times 2x gives me the first term, and y times another y gives me the second term. Are you excited? I'm excited. Those guys are gone. And check it out. We've got 1 over mu times d mu dy equals negative 1 over y. And I, I wrote that y like a mu for a for some reason. Um, so this is a function of y alone. So that means um, we can multiply both sides by dy and anti-differentiate both sides with respect to the appropriate variable. And e to this power is going to be our integrating factor, and we'll choose c to be 0 because we only need a single integrating factor. So we'll have e to this power, which is the same as e to the natural log of the absolute value of y to the negative first power, because you can bring that exponent up inside the logarithm. And then the e and the log undo each other, and you have a y to the negative 1. It's a lot of work just to get that y to the negative 1. But the claim is, if I take my differential equation and I multiply by y to the negative 1 right here, um, then the resulting differential equation is supposed to be exact. So let's check it out and see if it is. So I'm taking the dif differential equation and I'm multiplying by y to the negative 1 or if you prefer, you could just call it 1 over y, same thing. You distribute. Um, the y is reduced there, and you just end up with a 2x. y squared divided by y is just a y. And of course, that reduces with that y, and we just end up with an x. claim is, if we've done everything correctly, um, that this new equation is exact. So let's call this m star and this n star. And let's take the partial of m star with respect to y. The 
partial with respect to y of 2x plus y is just 1. Is that the same as the partial of n star with respect to x? You see it? I see it. I'm excited. Are you? They're both 1. Ta-da! That means the equation is exact. And if the equation is exact, then there's a function f out there such that the exact differential of f is equal to m dx plus m dy, which is by definition the partial of f with respect to x times dx plus the partial of f with respect to y times dy. And the only way that happens is if these guys are equal and these guys are equal. And that's great because the solution of the exact differential equation is just a level curve of some surface. And that surface is represented by z equals f of x, y. So um, I just need to find f. And I know it's partial derivative with respect to x. And I know it's partial derivative with respect to y. Uh, all I have to do to find f is get rid of those partial derivatives. That's easy enough. We just take antiderivatives. No big deal. So let's do that. Um, I know the partial of f with respect to x is 2x plus y. So f is the antiderivative of that derivative with respect to x with respect to x. So we just get x squared. That's a constant, the antiderivative of a constant with respect to x is the constant times y. And this is a partial antiderivative, so the, there's no constant of integration here. It's constant with respect to x, but not necessarily with respect to y. So that recovered f partially. We're gonna do the same thing with the partial of f with respect to x. That's n star, it's the, the modified n, which happened to just be x. So that's the partial of f with respect to y. We want to take its antiderivative with respect to y. So that's a constant with respect to y, so we get constant times y plus a function that is constant with respect to y, but not necessarily with respect to x. This is f and this is f. So you got to put those two pieces together. First, you write down anything they have in common. They both have that x squared y in them, or excuse me, x, y in them. So f is x times y plus something else. These are the pieces that don't match. But they have to match. If these are truly the same function, then x squared plus h of y has to be that g of x. Well, if this is g of x, this is not allowed to depend on y at all. So h of y must be a constant. Um, so we have x squared plus y over here, or x squared plus that constant over here. So let's check it out. Let's make sure both of these are satisfied. This one has an xy plus x squared plus h of y, which is a constant. Okay. Is that the same as xy plus a function of x? Yeah. So that's our f of xy. And remember, the solution of the differential equation is f of x, y equals k. And so in our case, that's x, y plus x squared equals k. And that's the solution of the equation. Now, it's, it's kind of hard to remember because it's been so long since we did everything from first principles. That was actually an initial value problem. We're told that when x equals 1, y has to equal 2. That'll be enough to help us find k. So this is the solution. But we want a particular level curve. We want the one where um, that passes through this point when x equals 1, y equals 2. And that's because this initial condition was given to us. So I replace x with 1 and y with 2. And that gives us the value for k. So we've got x times y is 2 plus 1 squared, so 3. I think k was 3 on the last initial value problem. k is not always 3, uh, but k happens to be 3 on this one.
So that is the solution of this initial value problem. It was initially not exact, but we were able to make it exact by multiplying by a function mu um, that satisfied this relationship. Now, sometimes when you take this class, it really depends on the teacher. Sometimes you can, you'll be expected to do everything from first principles, like we did here. We said, well, what if mu depends on x? Is that possible? No. What if mu depends on y? Is that possible? We did some algebra, turns out yes. Um, sometimes people will have you do everything from first principles. Then you'll solve the differential equation, the separable differential equation for your integrating factor and then multiply by it and solve the resulting exact equation. Or they'll say, we went through this derivation and because we went through this derivation, all I want you to check are these two conditions. Compute this, compute this. If this is a function of y alone, um, then mu is equal to this. If this is a function of x alone, then mu is equal to that. Um, so it really depends on your teacher. I think I'm going to give you the formulas, but I did want you to see from first principles where that comes from. Okay, so we're going to do one more example, this time with formulas. So I've got negative 2x cubed minus y times dx plus x plus 2x squared times dy equals 0. And we've got y of 1 is uh, equal to 1. That's our initial condition. So the claim is this is not an exact equation, but we want to make it exact. So let's prove that it's not exact. So if this is m and we take its partial with respect to y, that's well, going to be 0. Derivative of that piece is negative 1. If you take the partial of n with respect to x, what do you get? You get 1 plus 4mx. Um, OK, those are not the same. So the differential equation is not exact in this form. But we did some derivations. And we know that if this minus this divided by m is a function of x alone or y alone, I don't remember. Actually, this is the, here are the rules that we derived from scratch. So it's not like we're just taking something for granted. We actually came up with it. Um, if this function is a function of x alone, then mu equals, and mu is going to be a function of x, and mu equals e raised to the integral of that power with respect to x. Um, is the integrating factor that we can multiply by to make the differential equation exact. Or we said, if this relation depends on y alone, then mu is a function of y only. And we've got this, e to the integral of this power Um, is the integrating factor. And again, it all came from this derivation that we did at the very beginning and turning this into a separable differential equation, which is only possible if that's a function of x alone or if that's a function of y alone. Okay, so I'm looking at both of these and I'm looking at these functions and I'm looking, oh, that's, those are definitely functions of x. So I bet it's this case. So let's check this out. Let's take this guy and divide by, or take uh, this uh, difference and then divide by n. If it's a function of x alone, that's going to be our integrating factor. So partial of m with respect to y minus the partial of n with respect to x divided by n is this. Yeah, that's a function of x alone. So distribute the negative. So you have negative 1 minus 1 is going to be negative 2 minus 4x in the numerator, all divided by x plus 2x squared. See if it factors at all. 
So you could factor out a negative two, negative two times one plus 10 to one gives me negative two and negative two times positive two X gives me that negative four X. And down here, let's factor out an X. X times one gives me X and X times two X gives me two X squared. Isn't that nice? So this ends up being negative two over X. And that means the antiderivative of that with respect to X is just negative two times the natural log of the absolute value of X plus C. We're gonna choose C to be zero because we only need a single integrating factor. And the integrating factor in this case is mu of X and it's E to that power. And remember we can use that log property. Remember this guy. You can bring that up inside, that expression inside the logarithm, make that a to the n. And let's just assume that x is non-zero. Um, and actually, we've got an initial condition with x equals 1. So let's assume x is greater than 0. So we're going to have uh, mu of x is 1 over x squared for x strictly greater than zero. Okay. So this time, rather than starting from first principles, we started with some rules, which we derived. And there they are. And we're gonna take this differential equation and multiply by the integrating factor one over x squared. And the hope is that when we're done, the resulting differential equation, equation excuse me, is exact. So let's take our differential equation that we started with and multiply by the integrating factor. And don't forget your initial condition. The integrating factor is one over x squared. So it's the same as multiplying by it is the same as dividing by x squared. And we end up with this. Um, negative two x cubed divided by x squared is gonna be a negative two x, and then I'll have a minus. I'll bring that up to the numerator, make that x to the negative two. And then x over x squared is a one over x, or x to the negative one, and two x squared over x squared is just a two. If we did any, everything correctly, excuse me, then the derivative of this guy, which I'm gonna call m star, my modified m, with respect to y, should equal the derivative of this guy, my modified n, with respect to x. So let's check it out and make sure. I hope it is. I hate when I go through some derivation and then I'm like, oh, it didn't work out. Must have made an algebra error somewhere. Make a sign error. But it reminds me of being a student. I mean, we all go through that, don't we? Sometimes that happens, and that's okay. The derivative of this with respect to y is simple. Uh, there's no y's in this, so the derivative of that piece is zero. And then this is a function of x times y, so that's a constant times y as far as we're concerned. The derivative of a constant times y is just the constant, and so we get a negative x to the negative two. And the partial of n star with respect to x, the partial with respect to x of x to the negative one plus two, I just use the power rule there, that's negative x to the negative two. Makes me very happy. Check it out. The modified differential equation is exact. So we can solve this equation now. There's some function out there such that the differential of that function is equal to m dx plus n dy. And that's the partial of f with respect to x times dx plus the partial of f with respect to y times dy. Or in other words, 
the partial of f with respect to x is m, or m star, these modified m's and n's. So that's negative 2x minus x to the negative 2 times y. And the partial of f with respect to y is n star. It's that, oops, not this camera. There we go. Sets at x to the negative 1 plus 2. Well, with those two pieces, since I've got the partial derivatives of f with respect to x and y, I can get f back. And if I can get f back, then I can solve the exact equation. Trying to find a piece of paper here that I've already used a little bit. I like to use all my paper because I, I go through so much of it and I feel bad about the trees. Let's see, okay. So I'm here, and let's look at this guy again. We've got the partial of f with respect to x is this, and the partial of f with respect to y is this. So I just need to take some partial antiderivatives. So f is the antiderivative of the partial of f with respect to x with respect to x. And in this case, we had negative 2x minus x to the negative 2 times y. So bring that uh, constant down, add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. Bring this y down, which is also a constant, then add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. And we're taking a partial antiderivative, so we don't add a c, we add something that's constant with respect to y, but not or constant with respect to x, but not necessarily with respect to y. So we've got that right there. And similarly, if I want to recover f and I have the partial derivative with respect to y, we need to take the partial antiderivative with respect to y to get f back. That's a constant. The antiderivative of a constant with respect to y is your constant times y. Same thing for the two. We just get the constant times the variable plus a function that may depend on x but can't depend on y because the derivative partial derivative of that with respect to y is zero okay so these are the same function they're both f let's simplify a little bit we want to know what f is in general so in order to figure that out, we look at these functions and we match them. They have to be the same function. They're both f. So we see what, what do they have in common? Well, they both have that x to the negative 1 times y. So let's write that down. And I don't think they have anything else in common. But really, they, do, they have everything in common. They're the same function. So they, they just look different, but they're exactly the same. And it, we have to help them see what they have in common, almost. It's like trying to help people get along. There's so much that we have in common. Um, we tend to focus on the differences. I want to say, look, you guys are exactly the same. Anyway, uh, so this is the same as this. They're just written in a slightly different form. So this negative x squared plus h of y has to equal this 2y plus this function of x. Well, if the function of x is negative x squared, and if the function of y over here is the 2y, I think that's going to work. So our function f of x, y has the term that they have in common, and then it also has an, a negative x squared and a 2y and probably a constant of integration. Now, before we move on, before we state the um, family of solutions to the um, exact, the modified exact differential equation. Um, let's make sure this actually satisfies both of these at the same time. This is supposed to be that plus a function of y, so I've got a 2y, uh, plus the x, x, or negative x squared. It's got the negative x squared, and this is supposed to be a function of y. 2y plus c is a function of y, so it works out. This matches that. Let's make sure it matches this as well. Those are the same. Do they have a 2y? They have this 2y, and then I have a function of x. The function of x is negative x squared plus c, so that's great. 
That's not the solution of the differential equation. Remember, the solution of an exact equation is a level curve of some surface. So the solution of the differential equation is this, x to the negative 1 times y minus x squared plus 2y plus c equals k, but we'll just let the k on the right-hand side absorb the c. So we'll say this is the solution, the family of solutions to this equation. Now, hard to remember, but um, we were starting with this right here. We, we didn't just have the differential equation. We also had this initial condition. When x equals 1, y equals 1. That's enough to help us find the value of k. So when x is 1, y is 1. So this is y over x minus x squared, where x is 1, plus 2 times y, and that has to equal k. So we end up with 1 minus 1, so that's 0, plus 2 equals k. So k equals 2. And the solution of our problem is x to the negative 1 times y minus x squared plus 2y is equal to k, and k is 2. And, and now it's hard to tell, but let's say you've got a surface, and I'm just going to draw that elliptic paraboloid because it's the easiest one to see. So you've got a surface, z equals f of x, y. We're saying the solution to the differential equation is some level curve, and it's where k equals 2. Now this is obviously not this surface. That's a totally different surface. But the principle is the same. I'm going to graph a surface. I'm going to pl um, also plot the plane z equals 2, and I'm going to see where they intersect. It's going to intersect along a curve. That curve is the solution to this original differential equation, and it's the particular solution that passes through this point x equals 1 when y equals 1.